This is part five of our arthropod notes, and this section is the last one. It talks mainly about how insects are beneficial and sometimes harmful to humans. We will go through the benefits first. Um, one of the major benefits is the fact that insects help pollinate our crops on, in the United States, and this is a $19 billion um, industry and um, we rely on bugs to help us. They can be used as biological controls to destroy harmful um, substances and other pests. So instead of spraying pesticides, they can release a natural predator, insect predator, um, to destroy whatever pest is bothering crops. Um, also, they can um, be used to destroy other harmful substances or toxins or things like that in the environment. Um, in the soil, they can help in <clears throat> decomposition, they help aerate the soil, um, and even create soil, kind of like uh, earthworms do. And they are obviously a major part of the food web. Um, they're a base food source for many other animals. Another type of beneficial insect specifically is a honeybee. They do help pollinate crops and we get honey from them. Ladybugs are beneficial because they can eat harmful insects. Sometimes they're a little annoying um, because they get in your house and they're all over the place, but they don't really do any damage um, in that sense. They actually benefit us. Silkworms, um, these moths, actually the larva, the caterpillar larva, um, help produce silk that we can use. Then there are dung beetles that help break down dung or feces. Blowflies, um, these guys are going to help break down dead things. So an uh, animal gets hit and its carcass lays by the side of the road. These flies, um, their larva will help break down that um, carcass so that it's no longer there after a while. Here's a type of wasp. Um, they're actually pretty small, but they help kill harmful insects. Fruit flies are beneficial in genetics research because they have such a small genome. Um, they've learned how to turn certain genes on and off and they can test how um, you know those traits are passed on in generations. Okay, so now there are some harmful insects. Um, many parasites can spread diseases um, like fleas and ticks. They can spread malaria, yellow fever, bubonic plague, encephalitis, typhus. Um, they can destroy crops. They spread plant diseases such as Dutch elm disease and potato viruses. Crop damage in the U.S. Um, is estimated to be equivalent to $5 billion worth of damage, so they can cause a lot of damage. Um, the next slide I'm going to show you is a video. It's a Monsters Inside Me video, so I'll warn you ahead of time it is a little gross, but um, it's an example of how insects can be harmful directly to a human. Making noises and it's moving. Aaron Dallas is a ski instructor in Carbondale, Colorado. In the spring of 2007, something stops Aaron in his tracks. It was planting time, and as I was bending over to shovel, I felt this sharp pain in the back of my head. As I bent down, it got worse and worse. A week later, he begins to feel the skin on the back of his head is changing. I started to discover there were some distinct bumps on the back of my head. Aaron can feel a ring of five individual bumps protruding from the back of his head. As I'm lying in bed one night, I can hear noises in the back of my head. I can hear the bumps making noise. Uh, just a very faint scratch, 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 scratch. I woke my wife up and I said, you've got to see it. It's, it's making noises and it's moving. I took a shower right before I went to the doctor and went with wet hair to see the doctor. He parts my hair, looks at the bump, and pauses. He goes, oh my God, what is it, what is it, what is it? And he says, I don't.
don't know. All I can see are things moving inside the bumps on the back of your head. I think they're bot flies. The bot fly is a hairy insect about twice the size of a house fly. Its maggot larvae are known to live as parasites in human flesh. I am immensely relieved that I'm not going crazy, that there really are things moving and making noise on the back of my head. Aaron's head has been a nursery <laughs> to five growing bot flies. Skin <clears throat> provides food and shelter for baby bot flies. I don't like to use the word maggots because it's not a very nice word and it doesn't make me feel very good that there were maggots in my head. But what he showed me were maggots. Okay, here's another type of, um, it's a tent caterpillar. It's a harmful insect because they can destroy trees and shrubs by building their, their nests the way that they do. Bull weevil will destroy cotton. So they are a pest of uh, cotton fields. Mosquitoes are very dangerous because they are vectors. They carry other diseases inside of them. They can spread malaria, yellow fever, encephalitis, West Nile virus. We learned that they can spread um, the microfilarial disease, the heartworm disease. <clears throat> Fleas are vectors for the plague. They'll spread um, the bacteria that causes the plague. The rat flea specifically is the one who is the culprit for the major plagues in history. They, they one time they called it the Black Death, um, and this one killed in the 1300s. It killed about 25 million people in Europe. In the 1900s, it killed another 20 million people in India, and I think. You may or may not have seen these pictures before, but these are um, typically doctors or nurses that they're wearing protective clothing and then the beak on their face is actually filled with herbs and flowers so that they don't have to smell the decaying and dying people. Um, so it wasn't really a, a thing used to scare people, it was actually they're trying to make it smell better. Um, here are some buboes from bubonic plague. Here's someone who survived the plague and there's a lot of tissue damage that can be caused. This is an old graphic, um, but you can see areas where plague has been um, for humans um, in 1970 to 1998 are the tan areas where plague has occurred and then the red is where the plague occurs in animals so there's certain um, species of or certain strains I should say of bacteria that can cause plague in the animals and this gentleman here is the man who discovered the bacteria that caused the plague um, and they named it after him, Yersinia pestis. Um, this is the last slide in our notes. So if you missed something, you can go back and watch. Um, I would recommend re-watching the videos before a test, help you become more familiar with um, the topic so you don't spend too much time looking up answers during your test. But um, that's it for our arthropods.